cassava is the second major staple of food crop in Uganda after bananas and is a source of household income to especially smallholder farmers not only in Uganda but millions of people in sub-Saharan Africa. In Uganda, 74% of farmers grow cassava and the country produces approximately 5 million metric tons per year. However, this important crop is being affected by pests and diseases and this has also impacted negatively on the farmers in terms of incomes and food security. One of the pests affecting cassava is the white fly, which is a pest but also a vector for cassava brown streak disease and cassava mosaic. As a pest, white flies feed on the undersides of cassava leaves, making them to turn yellow and fall off prematurely, and it can lead to 70 to 100 percent yield loss. Cassava brown streak disease causes rotting of the tubers, leading to loss in yield and quality, while cassava mosaic causes shrinking of the leaves, which in turn leads to low yields. Agricultural science has introduced technologies like genetic engineering that can help to control some of the diseases and pests affecting cassava. For instance, National Agricultural Research Organization NARO has completed research on genetically modified cassava that has shown resistance against cassava brown streak disease and cassava mosaic. Because we have successfully developed varieties of cassava using genetic engineering approach, uh, we have 29 uh, varieties we have at the moment that are candidates for release to farmers. Um, these are all highly resistant to cassava mosaic disease and cassava brown streak disease. These are the two diseases that have been devastating cassava in the whole of Africa and there have been very high losses suffered by farmers. Uh, in excess of a hundred million dollars per year if you put the two diseases together. So over the last eight years we have gone through a process, a long process, but finally we have candidate varieties that we feel will do very well on the farmers fields. Here to verify that this kind of technology as we farmers we have realized that this kind of technology is very good to us. Since that we are not going to spend a lot of money in treating our cassava as it has been, that we have been spraying, taking a lot of energy. Naro is also breeding for resistance against white fly. And here we are breeding for resistance to white flies, which is the first work in the whole of Africa. Uh, in getting resistance for white fly. So essentially what you see here um, are, I will call children, that came from seven parents. And these seven parents um, comprise uh, of three that came from Latin America and uh, the two that are local varieties that farmers have. And then we have two improved varieties uh, that are already also in hands of farmers. But of the two improved varieties, we have what we call Nkumba. And already we have seen Nkumba is actually resistant to white fly, and that's not our own bred varieties. And the path we have taken is really to bring uh, these white fly resistant parents from Latin America and cross with our own varieties that already have very good attributes, say like the cooking quality, uh, nice taste, and maybe also perhaps gives us very good flour. So we are crossing then these locals with this improved so that we get a variety that has a blend of resistant white fly and also have the good cooking qualities as well as um, the other uh, attributes that the farmers might demand. Unfortunately, the uptake of such technologies in Uganda has not been realized due to lack of a regulatory framework. The passing of the genetic engineering law in Uganda has delayed to the extent that it has been rendered stale given the advances in technology and now the drafters have to go back to the drawing board. Of course I became a minister about one year ago 
the genetic uh, bill has been in parliament and before the president long before that. Uh, but because of time passage now, it doesn't address quite a lot of things which are currently now here. But still there are a lot of skepticism and uh, that's still hanging. And uh, most of them have been uh, health or risks uh, or safety concerns, but of recent it has become more of a sovereignty thing. For saying uh, maybe there's a recolonization people are going to take over us, but I think uh, we need uh, a strong policy direction. Policy direction and political goodwill. We know we have political will, but there is need to go beyond that. And I think that is what is really lacking. African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF, has played a critical role in helping African countries to transform their agriculture through science since some of the challenges cannot be solved by conventional breeding. Biotech crops can contribute a lot for the reason that Africa and indeed the entire world at the moment are going through the challenges brought about by climate change manifesting in form of frequent droughts causing food shortages all over the place. We are also going through uh, waves of um, new pests and diseases in form of folamiwam, locusts, we heard about them, and even medically we had uh, COVID-19 that locked and many, many others. Some of these challenges have no conventional solutions and we have to look for innovations in the field of biotechnology. The African Agriculture Technology Foundation has brokered, has allowed or has provided a, a negotiation table, a framework within which uh, African agriculture systems and countries can access technologies that exist around the world. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. If something has been developed somewhere and we think and we find that it can work for us, ATF has been the, the broker in between us to negotiate uh, that technology and to, to demonstrate that uh, to those who are donating the technology that they are also contributing to African agriculture, food security, incomes and uh, sustainable development. Scientists believe that biotechnology products can play a very important role in transforming Uganda's economy. Given the challenges facing the agricultural sector in Uganda, such as pests and diseases, there is a consensus that Uganda needs a regulatory framework to guide the application of agricultural science. Farmers are looking up to government to put this law in place for them to benefit from the genetic engineering research. Adia Nakuti, Juliet Naiga for UBC.